Our second guest tonight, Maurice Cotterell, has studied the effects of the sun for 20 years, and he joins us to shed some light, sorry for the pun, <laughs> on this issue. Welcome, Maurice. Thank you very much, Kate. Thanks so much for having you with us. You mentioned that your initial research into, into the sun had something to do with your experiences as a marine radio officer. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, that goes back to the early 70s, Kate. And what I noticed uh, was that the sunspot cycle caused disruptions to radio communications in the short wave bands. And uh, so I became very interested in the sun and the effects of the sun on the Earth. I also noticed, uh, personally, my own observations uh, were that when the, sun, uh, when the ship was sailing from north to south, the crew were very settled and, if you like, happy. But when they were sailing from east to west, they got very agitated and unhappy. And I couldn't understand this, and I thought, well, perhaps, you know, the magnetic field of the Earth does change from east to west. This is what causes jet lag. I, I was later to find out, many years later, uh, the magnetic field affects the pituitary gland in the brain uh, and that affects the, the uh, timing hormone melatonin and that causes jet lag. So it seemed to me that there was some sort of biochemical mechanism at play uh, from, caused by the sun which was affecting human beings on Earth. So I got very interested in the sun and as uh, I travelled around the world from China to India to Burma, uh, I uh, study the effects of the sun in many different ways and I made it my uh, labor if you like to find out the cause of astrology because clearly astrology and human behavior are interlinked and in 1986 I self-published a book for copyright reasons called astrogenetics which actually explained how the sun uh, mute sends out radiation every month how the radiation changes over the year and how that radiation results in 12 types of mutations, genetic mutations, to developing over in the womb. And this was the answer to uh, astrology. And that's how I became interested, really, in the sun. And from there, everything else followed. So, Maurice, what's your opinion, though, of the, uh, the whole issue of sun astrology? Like, so, is, so you think that there really is, are things like sun signs affecting how you behave? Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's no question about it. Uh, w our understanding of the sun has, has, has varied greatly over the last 50 years. It's improved and it's, you know, we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. And in 1962, Mariner 2 spacecraft discovered uh, particles are being thrown off the sun like a water sprinkler. Uh, in 1979, Professor Ian Nicholson, uh, an astronomer from Newcastle University in the UK, discovered that when these particles impinge upon the Earth's Van Allen protective belts, that the geomagnetic field varies at ground level. Then uh, research was carried out to show that modulating magnetic fields cause uh, genetic mutations to developing uh, cells in test tubes. So here we have the mechanism whereby the sun's radiation affects the magnetic field of the Earth, yeah. the magnetic field of the Earth shuffles at the genes, and we know from early uh, psychology investigations that uh, personality is linked to genetic factors, uh, and here we have the mechanism that shows how astrology works. Maurice, Why I have a question for you then. So then is it possible that the sun has caused the rise and fall of civilizations over the last million years? Absolutely, Richard, but that's for a slightly different reason, because the sun spins on its axis every 28 days, so it showers these particles in a 28-day cycle. That cycle regulates uh, the monthly cycle in females. So, uh, again, what happens is the radiation affects the female brain. That produces higher and lower levels of the follicle-stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. They, in turn, regulate oestrogen and progesterone production. And what that means is, is that the sun regulates fertility on Earth. Now, in 1989, when I was working at Cranfield University in the UK, I actually put the computer to work to figure out the actual duration of these cycles. Astronomers say it can't be done, but it can be done using a method I describe as rotational differentiation. Now, what happens is there are actually three solar cycles. There's an 11.49 year cycle, a 187 year cycle, and a, an 18,139 year cycle. And the solar radiation and fertility radiation varies over these cycles. Okay. So what that means is, uh, 
when the radiation goes up and down, fertility on Earth goes up and down, and so populations come and go. Got it. They're, they're, they are either more successful or less successful Maurice, over the period the, of history. The big question is, I wonder if the ancient Mayan people knew this. The Mayas absolutely did know about it. They worshipped the sun as the god of astrology and the god of fertility. How's that and, possible, uh, in, though? I mean, in they... the jungles of Mexico, uh, 1,250 years ago, the Maya calculated the cycles I've just described to you. So th the Maya, it's clear that they had a very, very sophisticated understanding of uh, what I call the super science of the sun.